Thanks very much for the uh, kind introduction and uh, the invitation to uh, join your event today. We are looking into uh, the changes that currently are happening and we fear that they are quite radical. I mean, you are aware of these things that have been invented since 2006. And just imagine that you would spend a week without any of those tools. Some call that uh, holiday, my daughter would call that terror, right? <laughs> so this is what's happening. So things sneak into our lives, in our daily lives, and they change quite more than the technology we handle. They uh, they changed the society as a whole. The most interesting part is what Hillary Clinton does. So she has adopted the difference in or the change in the behavior of um, her customers and that is happening. Society is changing as a whole. This is where we are right now. So a lot of the legislation of the digital age is yet to evolve. We don't have it yet things will change, not only in your business. The rules, how we live together, are fundamentally changing. I just want to give you an example how far individualization is taken today already. And of course, you know, that's in Germany impossible by the given laws. But it's naive to think that this is not going to be somehow also taking place in Germany at some point, because we will be redefining what our uh, private, private sphere is, how we are going to handle individual data. So this is what's happening. Um, it's not changing things that we wouldn't know. We can do them now because they get affordable and that fundamentally changed the way we are dealing. So a lot of the workplaces that are currently taken by human beings will be substituted by software and robots and they will not mimic something that could also be similarly done by, by humans. No, it's significantly better. While this is changing quite dramatically, the speed of change is also increased dramatically. Right? And just taking one example, 50 million smartphones took 10 years, 50 million tablets took one year. So the catching up game doesn't work anymore. And our traditional management methods just don't work in complexity. Just don't work because complexity comes with some things like uncertainty, for example. The challenge, though, is if you take your traditional handbook, you get two advices when it comes to uncertainty. First advice is if there is uncertainty, run away as fast as you can. <laughs> and then there is a second advice that says if you can't run away, try to reduce uncertainty. You need different methods to manage that. And there are different methods, but they are fundamentally different. Now, and then I, I keep with the gambling metaphor because it's kind of, you know, uh, you got some advices from your parents. Who got an advice on casino? You know, what did your parents say about casinos? Right, first advice is don't ever enter a casino, right? And if you are you know, a more than slightly misbehaving child to get a third kind of desperate device. So if you can't hold yourself from gambling, do what? Set yourself a limit, right. And this is how you could also join my second um, a game of rolling a dice. And a lot of the things that we, you know, seem to know are going to change, not based on analyze, decide, and act. It was the other way around act, <laughs> analyze, and then decide. So by acting, you create new knowledge. That knowledge may reduce uncertainty down to risk, and now you're back into your traditional decision methods. Think about those explorers of the age of the Enlightenment, right? They went to, you know, far away places. They didn't know the language. They didn't know the animals. They didn't know the plants. Yet, they had to communicate, they had to eat, and they had to defend themselves. This is the more exploring type of managing organizations. And your issue now is that unfortunately, you don't have only that right-hand side. And that is a German slash Central European issue. 
Only here we have companies like Siemens that are more than 165 years old that have to deal with combining the both. And that is actually the challenge also in leadership, not only doing the one or the other thing, but combining both to create what we call the both-handed or ambidextrous uh, organization. Agile doesn't scale. I wouldn't say Agile doesn't scale in 20 years. Maybe we have learned it then. The largest organizations that we know by now that are entirely Agile, organizations by the size of 1,000 to 1,500 people, they have no production, typically a service type of business model. This is basically where we're working. We are looking at um, embedded entrepreneurial teams, teams that work in that blue space, and we are doing that in a kind of a different way. We're using interviews um, that we code, transcribe, and analyze. This is how they look like, right? This is how we look at embedded entrepreneurial teams. Teams that have a high level of diversity, right? Strong personalities that are very low in harmony, by the way, only if you got the level of diversity up a lot, right? Not only one woman in, but several different ethnics, different educational backgrounds, different, you know, age and whatever. Then you get a team performance that is a lot higher, but the harmony in the team goes down. So they'll have a lot of fights. And again, they will not be quicker, they will not be faster, but they will get a better solution. The most important part of that team is what we call the um, uh, corporate entrepreneur, quite strong individuals that want to have a working contract, but at the same time want to work as an entrepreneurial leader. What type of leadership is needed for fostering this type of behavior? Can you answer why? Are you part of shaping the new digital society? What's your why? And autonomy, you get a loss of control. And of course, you don't want to lose control over 99% of your company. But maybe 5%, maybe 10%. That's uh, what you should seek for, a part where you can afford loss of control. And with that, I would like to come to an end. Um, first of all, courage is what it needs. And courage is kind of an underestimated leadership skill these days, right? Because you need to allow things where you don't know where they end. That was digital transformation is about. Take what you know, take all of your experience, your deep customer knowledge, and leverage that with digital means into new services, new markets, and new customer groups. And what we find is that then traditional industrial companies are not only on par with startups, they are even superior. Thanks very much.